Hey guys, this is Paul Kepner with PK Productions and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about this particular lens. It's called a B4. Um, I've had a lot of people asking about it and I've, I've mentioned it and I've shown some pictures of it and stuff. And they're asking what it can do and what its capabilities are. <clears throat> Originally this was designed for the big news cameras like you see uh, the videographers carrying on their shoulder with the big eyepiece. And they, I mean, they weren't really made for the DSLRs like this or until the mirrorless ones came in, like this Panasonic GH2 right here. Um, the, this particular one was made for a multi-prism uh, sensor, and these are single sensors. So you get, a, originally you get a little bit of chromatic aberration if you have these wide open. Now this particular lens starts at a f1.6 and goes all the way to f22, which is kind of crazy. You don't really need that because it's pretty much closed by then. But the, uh, the cool thing about it is the zoom capability on this is crazy. I, I went out to the lake uh, earlier and I took some shots of it, with it. And there's a, uh, on one side of the, the uh, little beach area, and there's a power plant but a mile away across the other side of the lake. And I had this camera set up on the same tripod and zoomed in. And you can actually see it. And I'll, I'll actually show you some test footage of it. Uh, there's some people out there kiteboarding. And I was tracking them and following them. You can, you, I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, the cool thing about this is these are these this particular one I have is an SD lens which for standard definition cameras but I can use it on my high definition one the nice thing is you can get these fairly inexpensive um, this particular lens depending on the condition uh, you know bumps and scrapes and stuff like that you can get them anywhere from about fifty sixty dollars up to a couple of hundred dollars now they have other ones that actually have what's called a doubler built in right here which basically doubles the image. Uh, the reason that's important is on this particular lens, it's made for a two-thirds inch sensor. So basically when I turn the camera on, it shows, let's see if I can show you. Uh, you get, let's see, open it up a little bit so you can see. Yeah, there we go. You should be able to see it. If you look at it, well, oh, no wonder. There you go. That's what it looks like if you don't have a crop f uh, feature built into your sensor. You'll see that little circle like that. Now the GH2, which and a lot of the mirrorless cameras actually have, they have what's called a crop feature built into it. So you can go down, put, turn, enable the crop, and then you get full sensor which is really nice to have. Uh, the plus side to it is it basically, I believe, I know the crop on the camera is a two times, and then with this, I believe it comes out to about a four, four times, four to five times zoom on it. So this particular lens is a nine to 126 zoom, so basically it ends up being about a 500, uh, millimeter zoom at, at full zoom, <clears throat> which is a nice, nice feature. That's what I was able to pull in the uh, footage from that power plant so easy. Uh, these lenses are heavy. You definitely want some type of stabilization on them. They have, let me turn this around here. They have a hand grip right here. And originally these were made, like I said, for news cameras. And so you grab that hand grip and you throw it up on your shoulder and you've got the big camera. So you've, you've got multi-point uh, stabilization. This one easily weighs two to three times more than the camera itself. So if you grab that and you're holding it with, and trying to film, it, it shakes real bad because it doesn't have image stabilization built into the lens. They do have some that, are, that have that feature and you're talking many thousands of dollars for those those particular lenses and those, I would definitely leave those for the the news guys um, I use it on the tripod like you see here um, you can you can use it on a shoulder rig if you want 
Um, I've used it on here. The only problem is because the lens is so heavy, it's out here and you're holding it and I don't have a counterbalance for my rig yet. So it gets pretty heavy on the forearms. Um, but all in all, it's a really good lens. I, I enjoy it and it's not, I, I don't use it the most. <clears throat> if you're trying to get something far away, they work perfect for that. Uh, for up close, uh, honestly, I'd stick with my primes that I have or my regular kit lenses and things like that. But for far away shots, you can't beat it. For something that, like the, uh, the Canon lenses that are made for DSLRs that start at a 1.6 or even close to it, with this particular type of zoom and everything, you're looking a few thousand dollars, a couple thousand, easy. Where on the, the one with the doubler built in where you don't have to enable the crop feature, uh, you can get those, they start roughly, depending on where you pick it up on Craigslist or eBay. Um, $600, six, 600 to 1500 depending on the, uh, the lens and its condition. Um, like I said, this one doesn't have that. I don't really have a huge need for it, so I'm not going to spend the money on it. If I, had, if I did a lot of documentary work, uh, news gathering, things like that, I would definitely get one that had the doubler built in because it, it makes it a lot easier. You can run it on full sensor or you can crop it and then they even get even a farther zoom, which basically makes the, the lens much more usable in, in a lot of different areas. But um, take a look at this test footage from the lake. See what you think. <laughs> Now, I also took this out. My wife and son and his girlfriend and I we were out at the blue bonnet fields out here, and there, she was out there taking pictures. And I set this up, and so you guys can see some detail that this can pick up. I was out there uh, getting some test footage of them out in the blue bonnet fields. They were taking pictures while I was further back, of course, doing some video and. Uh, video and some other people as well so take a look at that at this one The one thing, like I said, you, you can't run this wide open at the 1.6 because, like I said, you will get the chromatic aberration, which means if you're looking at something, you'll, it'll look like there's a, uh, a purple or a green, uh, almost like a, a line going around the, the subject that you're looking at. Uh, and the way to get rid of that is basically stop the lens down. So instead of going to 1.6, maybe stop it down to like 2.8 or 3, which still this lens pulls in light really well. Uh, 
easily it'll, it'll sharpen up the image and <clears throat> still has a pretty decent depth of field but that's it this lens really isn't made for that now if you had the one with the doubler built in um, I haven't used one but you might be able to have it open a little bit more and get a little bit better depth of field but again it's not really made for that it's more made for like I said documentary news long zoom shooting far away you can do close-up like I said uh, as you can see in the videos uh, I shot some stuff just straight down at the ground just just for an example and you could see that everything's nice and clear uh, because I'm running in the crop mode or the ETC, which is the, on the Panasonic, the image isn't quite as sharp as it should, or not not should be, but could be if I was running full sensor. And, and there's a lot of that has to do with that, but uh, I'll get into that later, a different review. But the uh, if you notice on the lake review, um, I know you, you'll probably think, well, it looks a little bit hazy. That is actually the humidity in the air. It was raining off and on while I was out there and getting test footage. I actually had to leave because it started raining. But there, like I said, I was shooting at such a distance. Like it was a mile away. The high humidity, it makes it look hazy. And then when I was filming the power plant, uh, you could actually see some of the heat waves and stuff. So, But... Uh, it's a, it's a good camera. I would highly recommend it if you're if you know you're trying to get long range shots and things like that. But if you have oh, forgot to show you one more thing. Over here, you have this rocker switch. A lot of people ask what's that for and, and how do you use it. It has a power cable right here. Originally on the news cameras, it plugs up and it's made for the uh, going straight directly into the cameras power source and it powers it well it works off of any 12 volt power supply at the moment I don't have a power supply set up for it uh, I don't really have again I don't really have a huge use for it if I was using it more on the uh, shoulder rig I'd probably get set up a battery on it uh, may not be a bad idea to have a counterweight as well as a battery to kind of help balance it out. But right now, the, the little bit I use with it, I don't need it. Uh, I can just manually zoom it right here with this little bar. So, And that's not a problem. Real easy. Now, it's not as smooth as with the rocker. But again, I don't have a huge demand for a 12 volt power to get the, the nice zoom and if you don't want if you get one of these lenses and you don't want this for some reason it's just four screws this whole assembly comes off and you, it's just a bare lens so uh, I would definitely suggest if you get one of these lenses because of the weight on them I would get some type of adapter that has a foot on it right here so the foot holds the lens and not the camera if you do that there's a really good chance you're going to bend your camera, the uh, the flange on it, and you definitely don't want to do that. Uh, the thing's on there pretty tight, but see, and you can see it's, it's a big adapter, totally different than what I most uh, most cameras are used to, and it fits on there real quick, and it's back on there. So you can set them up pretty quick if you need to. Um, like I said, if you have a, a use for something like this, for distance shooting, uh, even if you want to play around with it, if you like filming nature shots or you know animals, squirrels, whatever in the trees, uh, whatever, any distance shots, this this lens is perfect for. It, it works really, really well. Um, it, it, there's a lot of uses for it. Like I said, but. Um, Doing close-up shots, uh, a lot of movement shots, not a good idea. It, it, it wouldn't work well for that. So, anyway, I hope this has helped you some. I hope it answered some of your questions. If you have any other questions, feel free to shoot me a line. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them for you. But again, this is Paul Kepner with PK Productions. If you like what you see, uh, if you like the reviews, feel free to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. So. But uh, I appreciate it. Thanks.